Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. We're MIG welding again this week and I'm doing a 3G vertical plate test. Open butt plate test. So I'm going downhill on the root and uphill on the fill and cap. Now this test is given in schools quite a bit. Not necessarily out in the field because it's short circuit MIG, but it is given in schools quite a bit to get someone ready for pipe welding. And the reason that is is because plate's cheaper a little bit easier to weld if your skill level is not quite where it needs to be for pipe yet and the same settings you get dialed in on the plate work just fine on the pipe as long as the wall thickness is very close so let's get to it all right got the plate set up in the 3g vertical position ready to weld mill scale cleaned off both front and back next to the weld now downhill mig is notorious for getting lack of fusion but when it's clean bright metal like this and you have an open root gap with a nice bevel that's, that's a perfect situation for downhill MIG. These are the specs. I won't read them off. You can freeze frame here if you want to record these. All right, well, let's get ready to weld. As always, I like to take a few dry runs on something like this, make sure my hand positioning is like it needs to be and I'm not going to get hung up on anything. What you want to do on the downhill route is keep that gun angle pointed up like that. You don't want to twist your wrist where the gun angle changes. You want to keep it pointed up. Now, see if you can tell me what's about to go wrong here. <laughs> what's wrong with the picture? Yeah, I forgot to put the ground clamp on. And I did go ahead and press the trigger and discovered that way. But let's do it here. See my gun angle? There's a little bit of leeway on that. You can you can change it a little bit, but you want to shoot for what, about what I've got here. You want to keep, the, keep it punched up in there. And you want to keep the arc, the tip of the wire, on the very leading edge of the puddle. Now, you can play around with it a little bit while you're practicing and see about how far on that leading edge you can get away with without shooting wire through. But when you shoot wire through, they call that whiskers because it will be a nice long poker out the back side. But this is about how that looks. And just stay on the, on the leading edge. Not, not any side-to-side uh, -side motion required. And carry on until you're done putting the root pass in. Now the settings and the and the land and the gap and all that make a lot of difference here. Right here I've got a pretty flush root. Maybe in places it's actually concave, so I would need to tweak it a little bit. And probably what I need to do is turn the turn the voltage down a little bit and increase the wire feed speed just a little bit. And I can kind of change the profile and push a little bit more through the backside. Now we're going uphill, and really my experience has been you don't really have to let it cool off a whole lot between the root pass and the second pass. In fact, I have done it where I didn't even stop. I just, I just made a U-turn and kept going. And uh, especially if I'm just marginally, you know, a uh, little bit cold, it really works out really well that way. But watch the leading edge of the puddle here. I'm, I'm keeping the arc on the leading edge of the puddle, and you see a little spatter going on there. That means I need to turn the wire feed speed up just a little bit. And so I did. I turned the wire feed speed up about uh, maybe about 10%. And now we see this little less spatter not a lot of difference in in uh, everything else but a little less spatter and a little uh, more stable arc and I'm controlling everything else just with technique now you want to be flat across the face of this pass and that means keeping a nice close stick out and it also means coming out far enough on the bevels but you don't want to chew them off so you know stop maybe a sixteenth short of the bevel on each side if you do that you'll be slightly under flush and you'll be flat and that's what you want to be. You don't want to have a crowned up second pass here. A crowned up second pass is going to make a crowned up third pass. And uh, it's just kind of hard to burn in and move fast enough across the middle. Speaking of which, you can see I'm, I'm moving fairly quickly across the middle. Now is when you need to let it cool. You don't want to go right back on that thing while it's hot like this. It'll be really hard to control that cover pass. So we're going to let it cool for a good little while. Go off, get a drink of water, uh, you know put a fan uh, you know four, four or five feet away or something like that and speed cool it off just a little bit you don't want to dunk it in water but you do want to let it cool off and you want to definitely remove those silicon deposits and wear your eye protection I have had that stuff pop off in my eye and had to go to the nurse's station before it's it's no fun now this looks like I'm actually using a little bit of a drag angle but I'm not it's a little bit deceiving on the angle that I'm filming from I'm trying to hold dead straight 90 degrees and or a very slight push angle. But same technique here. I'm moving really quickly across the middle, pausing on the toes. And it's taking about one second. Now watch this. I'll count here. 
1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. It winds up being pretty darn close to one second for each sweep across there. Now I've got nice bevels to, to uh, guide me because I didn't chew them off too bad. I nipped them here and there, but barely. But they're, they're nice straight lines and the mill scale is cleaned off. So that's what's going to let me put a decent looking cover pass on this thing. Also, you can see I got a little spatter buildup on the nozzle there. Don't let that get out of hand. Spatter buildup will eventually clog the nozzle and you, you'll lose gas shielding, but also it can arc out to where if you touch the copper nozzle on the plate, you'll just kind of shunt out and uh, sputter, and that's not cool either. So, that's the final weld. It might shake a little bit, but it won't fall off. See you next time.